Hello, everyone, and good afternoon. Welcome to the Business Academy series, Building Your Workforce at Home. I'm Keelan George, the Director of Communications for the West Virginia Chamber of Commerce. For those of you who are joining us for the first time for a Business Academy event, welcome. And for those of you who are joining us again, welcome back. We launched the Business Academy last year. It's a series of webinars and content designed to bring educational tools to our members and beyond. So thank you so much for joining us today. I'd like to let you know that we do have questions available at the end of this session. Um, just type your questions in the chat box and we'll have some time uh, once our panel gets wrapped up here today. We're thrilled to again be teaming up with West Virginia's community and technical college system. And I'm honored to be introducing you to our, our guest today. We have Dr. Sarah Armstrong Tucker, West Virginia's Chancellor of Higher Education. Anita Ferguson, Corporate Director for Talent Acquisition at CAMC. Dr. Casey Sachs, President of Bridge Valley CTC. So thank you again for joining us today. And with that, I will toss it over to Chancellor Tucker. Thank you, Kaylin, and thank you to Steve Roberts and everyone at the Chamber for inviting us to the Business Academy. The Chamber has truly been a remarkable partner for all of higher ed, and I, I can't begin to tell you how much I appreciate that. At our last Business Academy, we talked to Todd Fox at Comores about their tremendous partnership with WVU Parkersburg and their use of the Learn and Earn program. Today, we have an equally strong but very different partnership that we want to talk about. One of the many things that I hope you will all get from these presentations is that the relationships between community colleges and business and industry in this state are as varied as the businesses we serve. Our community colleges tailor their programs to meet your needs, and today is another example of that. So with that, I'm going to turn to Anita Ferguson at CAMC. Anita, thank you for joining us today. Could you start by talking about the workforce and the workforce needs at CAMC? Yes. Well, first of all, Chancellor Tucker, thank you so much for the invite. This is a, I am so thrilled to be a part of this panel discussion and especially with one of the best school partners that uh, truly CAMC can have and that is through Bridge Valley and Dr. Sachs is, is at the, the helm of that and part of the reason why it's such a great uh, relationship. Um, but at CAMC, you know, whenever that you start thinking about hospital and healthcare, you immediately think about uh, clinical positions. But, you know, healthcare has a whole business side as well, uh, not only those clinical positions. But currently, you know, we're growing. I'm sure that you've, you've seen CAMC in the news. And uh, we brought on some a uh, couple of hospitals, as well as some acquisitions that we're bringing on in with physician practices. So whenever that we look across the board, we have over a thousand vacancies right now that we need to fill for our six hospitals, as well as our um, over 100 and some physician practices that we have. So again, we have a huge need, not only for that clinical staff, but also that clerical business and professional staff that obviously that's that's where that partnering with Bridge Valley and other colleges um, help us uh, meet that gap, that staffing gap. Thank you. Now I know that you and that CAMC and Bridge Valley have had a long partnership, but could you talk to us a little bit about why and how you first started working with Bridge Valley? Absolutely. So actually, we started working with Bridge, Val Bridge Valley before that Bridge Valley was in an inception. You know, it was Kanawha Valley uh, Community Technical Center. And then what a great transition into Bridge Valley. The staff there is absolutely fantastic to work with. But I know that the, the one thing that we're most proud of and, and that bridging uh, with Bridge Valley is we had a cohort nursing program that we started years ago with Bridge Valley. And it was very successful. And then and of course, it kind of, you know, turned into uh, we need more and more. And then, of course, we partnered with them with other clinical and clerical uh, programs that were needed in order to meet that staffing gap. So again, looking at Bridge Valley, clinical affiliation agreements are big, and we love to have their students to come into our organization. You know, students are our pipeline. So again, uh, bridging with uh, Bridge Valley, as well as other schools in our community, 
community. That is key in order to, you know, staff our positions and our workforce here within the organization. Um, again, clinically, that is an awesome, there are so many awesome programs that they have at Bridge Valley, whether it's the lab program, the sonography program, as well as their nursing program. But also, you know, IT is growing and we're really partnering with Bridge Valley for our IT programs, as well as a lot of the students, as they're going to school, we're hiring them on in our admitting position, registering patients, as well as we have opportunities with patient safety attendance that is flexible enough to work around the school the students' schedules that we can bring them, you know, on and hire them at the hospital. And then in hopes of that, they're going to find a great place here and stay so that their, their students are wonderful. They are well prepared to, to go into the workforce, whether it would be on that clinical side or whether it would be on that professional business side. So again, the partnership, I just see it growing with Bridge Valley. Um, you know, we're in talks of some other ideas. I'm not going to give it away on here, but we're in talks of, you know, starting some other additional programs and uh, just strengthening that that relationship with Bridge Valley. <clears throat> and I think those examples that you gave are, are really impressive because I, one of the things that's interesting about the CAMC partnership with Bridge Valley is that I think a lot of us would think about, well, it's got to be a healthcare program, right? That's the partnership is with the healthcare program. But what I hear you saying is that you have IT partnerships, do you have HR partnerships, perhaps things like that, that can really help with, um, with critical needs in your workforce that aren't necessarily what your business is about, right? Absolutely. Every, every Absolutely. company across the state has IT needs, everyone. And community colleges are a way to help, help fill that gap, which is just tremendous. Absolutely. You know, again, as I stated before, you know, whenever you think about a hospital, you automatically think of those clinical positions. And obviously, that's a big part of our, you know, workforce. But it's also the business side of it with those professional technical individuals that we're hiring. It's just a big of a need. And of course, we, again, building that pipeline and making sure that we have good individuals that that are in the community. A, a, another thing about Bridge Valley, most of the students are really in this region and in this community, and they want to stay here. And what a better place to come and work than CAMC. We've been around for quite some time. Hopefully we're going to be around, uh, you know, longer. So again, I just think it's 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 a, a win-win for both of us as well. Let's talk about those students for a minute because students are my favorite thing to talk about. What can you tell us about your students at Bridge Valley and your experiences working with them? Their students are absolutely wonderful. Like I said earlier, they are well prepared whenever they come to us. I know that um, I don't want to tiptoe too much into Dr. Sachs's, uh, you know, uh, spiel, but, you know, their, their pass rate for their nursing program is phenomenal. And again, you know, once that you get those students in the door, we're hiring them on as nurse externs while they're going through, you know, the nursing program. And then we really don't have to worry about, are they going to be able to pass that, you know, NCLEX exam? their licensure board, uh, you know, sitting for those licenses. So, you know, that has not been an issue with us. And we love, again, their students. They are well prepared, no matter if it is the IT role as well, uh, you know, hiring those individuals on, they are prepared to, to go into a workforce and, and be employed by an employer. Anita, you're not stealing any of my thunder saying yes. our students are wonderful. You can say <laughs> that as much as you'd like. Good, good. <laughs> <laughs> So what would you say has been the biggest benefit for your partnership with the college? Um, I mean, personally, oh my gosh, the, the people that I have met and really built and, you know, this relationship with um, has really helped, you know, just trickle down to the student aspect of it and having those students to come here. Um, again, I don't know if I can pinpoint one thing, Dr. Sachs, you may be able to pinpoint one thing, but I don't, I, I can't. Uh, one of the things that we absolutely love about Dr. Sachs and her staff there, um, they are willing to sit down with us and talk about our workforce needs, talk about, you know, what can we do to, to meet those workforce needs and those staffing? Uh, are there any gaps 
that we can fill. Um, and, you know, not everyone is willing to do that. So I know that that has been welcoming from a CAMC standpoint. I know here recently we just had that conversation of just, you know, with our chief nursing officer was involved. Our vice president of human resources was involved. We had professional nursing that was there as well of just talking about what can what else can we do? Are there other um, areas that we can expand? Are there other, you know, workforce needs that we can look at? Are there other programs that we that we can explore and implementing in order to meet those workforce needs? And that is the part that I think maybe that is one thing that, that I can pinpoint to say that you're so open, they are so open of sitting down and talking to employers and really wanting to meet the workforce need of not only the business, but the community. You know, again, whenever you think about healthcare, we're not only you know, taking care of our own patients and the employees here, but we're taking care of our community. And Bridge Valley is a, a big part of that and making sure that we have safe, you know, patient care that is local, that we don't have to travel anywhere, that we can get it right here in Charleston. So all of that is music to my ears. And I'm pretty certain that it's also music to Dr. Sachs's ears. <laughs> That's <laughs> wonderful. And I'm, I'm thrilled. Um, that Bridge Valley is able to fill that that hole for you and is able to be such a wonderful partner. Um, Dr. Sachs, can you talk about it from the college perspective? Talk about your partnership with CAMC and then also about the opportunities that are available for smaller employers. We know CAMC is quite large. Great point. Um, I guess I'll, so let me start with CAMC. We have several work-based learning programs in place with them. CAMC hosts more of our clinical placements in healthcare than anyone else. So certainly to start with sort of that core business function of healthcare, their nurses are preceptors for our students. They hire more of our healthcare students than any other employer. So that's the nursing, LPN, RN, medical lab tech, sonography, respiratory therapy, um, medical lab tech. Oh my gosh. It, I think I could create twice as many people and CAMC would probably continue to hire them all. So it's been a really robust partnership in that sense. Um, CAMC has a scholarship that helps support many of our students. So they, uh, particularly in nursing, once students are enrolled in our nursing program, then CAMC is actually paying for the student's education while they're in college. Um, and then there's the non-healthcare programming that we're working on business, IT accounting kinds of things. Um, when I think about employers broadly, we really, We'll work with any employer, regardless of size. And a whole lot of what we're trying to do is listen to our employer community and give them what they say they want. So when Anita talks about what her needs are and how do we ramp up programming, we started our LPN program because CAMC came to us and said, we really need you to start an LPN program. Um, the, the hospital and business was saying, you know, we're thinking we need to do it ourselves. And we're not really educators. So could you do this? Um, we'd be better off if you'll do it. And so that is perfect for us. Um, we really wanna have programs where we know our students are going to get employed. That matters a lot. And so even with small employers, it's about customized training. It's creating schedules that work for your workforce. It's helping you recruit new talent. It's changing our programming to better meet your needs. So if we're teaching something and you're like, that's really outdated technology now, you know your business better than we do, and we all recognize that. So it's really trying to be responsive. Um, but it's also jointly marketing to recruit talent. I think one of the things we're seeing, particularly with small employers, is you know they might need one person every other year. So it's not enough to say, let's start a whole cohort or let's start a whole um, program that's very specific, but either hire one person every couple of years out of an existing program we have, or actually some employers hire their own talent and then make the commitment very much like CAMC is doing. So CAMC pays for students to go to college. Small businesses also are paying for people to go to college. So you hire someone who's talented, who you think, this is really the person I want, let's get them the skills they need. And the, we step in as a college to, into that skills space. Um, we have joint scholarships with several employers, lots of student incentives, a few employers that are, are really trying to figure out how do we even just pay to keep students in school at this point, that some of our students could be a flat tire away from dropping out, that having something that seems really basic that any of us on the webinar today would just go fix our flat tire. Some of our students just don't have the resources to be able to do that. 
And our businesses are really stepping up and saying, that's ridiculous. We don't want a flat tire to be the reason why someone can't continue on in school. Let's make sure that there's some funds to keep them engaged. So that's been terrific. And then um, I know this is one of Chancellor Tucker's favorite things to talk about. We have learn and earns that we do with every size business. So it's from the CAMCs, the giant employers in the region, to the really tiny one-person accounting firms where they the business comes in and takes a student out of our existing program and the college um, jointly works with that business to submit a grant application to Chancellor Tucker's office where we go together to match wages with the employer. So the college can reimburse the employer um, for whatever, you know, if you're paying someone $20 an hour, now the employer's outset is $10 an hour and the college will match $10 an hour. And that learn and earn opportunity really gets students some of that hands-on experience that's so critical to making them employable once they've graduated. That the, the classroom learning is so important, but so is that hands-on experience, especially with a company that's committed to helping them learn and succeed. And that's, I mean, all of those partnerships are so wonderful and they're so important for, for our students. And as Dr. Sachs mentioned, we have several or several companies that are willing to put money forth towards scholarships to help students um, go through college. But one of the things that I want you all to realize is the state of West Virginia has been incredibly gracious with their student aid. And so when you think about what paying for tuition is at a community college, know that the tuition is not terribly expensive. It's not a very onerous commitment. And then there are all of these other financial aid packages that can come into play. So what it means to cover tuition may actually be a very, very small dollar amount for the company, but it may be the difference between whether or not you get an employee. And, and so thinking about what those different types of partnerships look like, those different types of aid. And again, things like Dr. Sachs said, paying for tires, um, helping people figure out childcare issues. All of those things are really, really important for our students. So. Dr. Sachs, let me pretend that I am a business owner and I have workforce needs and I have heard this presentation and I understand that there's a local community college that can help me meet my workforce needs, but I have absolutely no idea what I'm supposed to do or what that process looks like. Can you walk us through um, what that process um, would be when companies want to partner with a community college on a program? You bet. So our process internally really depends on the company and what they want and how they find us. And I think your point is a great one that people don't always know who do I call. Um, every college has someone who works in workforce who's a really great starting point. All of the presidents in our system are wonderful and I know any of them would help make sure you got the right person. So those are potential starting points. Um, for us, some companies want students from existing programs, some want new programs or new certificates, some want their current workforce trained for a new skill. So depending then on what you tell me or what you tell my workforce person, um, I'm going to make different connections for you. So the, the company would reach out to the college and say, here's what I'm looking for. And we're happy to take you however you find us. So if that's through career services or an academic dean or a program chair or my office, those are all great ways. I would tell you anyone on my staff wants to be able to help you get the workforce needs met that you have. Um, and then really it's a matter of us being able to talk through what's possible. So it helps when you know what you're looking for. It helps if you say, gosh, I need somebody who has a Cisco certification, and I really can't hire them until they have that certification. So that's one way That's one way to find you a person. It's another way to find you a person if you're like, you know, I just want someone who's willing to learn the Cisco certification, and I'll take them before they have it. And so that's two different strategies then that I'm going to have to be able to either train you a person or give you a person who's already trained. Um, the best partnership is also in helping us fill our programs because that really trains the whole workforce pipeline. Um, some companies have said, you know, we sort of think we need to start our own training program. And I would certainly challenge you to think differently about it. Don't recreate the training wheel. Let us do that for you. Let us be that training component for your, for your business, whether it's training new talent or training existing talent. But the partnership that I would ask you for is to help us make sure that the classes that we're running are filled with people who you would want to hire. So if you know that you need talent in 
nursing or IT or whatever it is, we can we'll, we can start the LPN program that Anita asked us for, but we're not the we're not the employer. And so it helps so much when CAMC says to people who come into HR and say, I want to work at CAMC, when they say, Great, you're gonna need some training and you should go do that training at Bridge Valley. We help pay for it. We'll help make sure you have a job while you're doing it. We'll help make sure you're connected. But um, mm -hmm. CAMC clearly says to people, go to Bridge Valley. You'll be West Virginia Invest eligible. Your tuition will be covered. We really just need to cover some fees. And the hospital's willing to do that because we really like you as a potential employee. And so some of that makes a huge difference in making sure we have that pipeline completely filled and that we've really talked together about who is it that we should be recruiting into this program? Can, can I just interject just for a second with that? Please. Okay. So one of the things that that um, and I would be remiss if I didn't if I didn't mention this. Um, you know, whenever that we um, approached Bridge Valley and Dr. Sachs and her team, we were already looking at starting our own LPN program. And so we quickly was like, you know what, looking at all the regulations, looking at, you know, all the hurdles that we needed to jump over in order to start a program, we quickly realized that we need to stick with healthcare and taking care of patients. And let's get some educators here that knows how to do this, that knows, you know, that, that that's their purview and their lane. And let's get out of that business. So again, this is where that that partnership and having those relationships with Bridge Valley really helped us and guided us. And it's that trust that we have built with each other as well, knowing that whenever that we do have a request that it is valid and we are going to be able to play place their students here and hire them. And we have that trust too, that they're going to have excellent students that, that are going to be ready, you know, to hit the ground running and take care of those patients uh, that we have that's coming from the community as well uh, to, to do that. So again, we quickly was like, we have no business being in education and starting our own program. And we need to let the experts do that. But it's so hard that would be my recommendation. <laughs> you want you sort you know what your needs are, and it's like I can just do this myself. It's easier. And so my call for anybody who's watching today is let us let us try. We really <laughs> we're really interested in training your workforce. We really do want to do that. It's what we specialize in. Um, and it, if we can save you from feeling like you have to start your own training program, that feels like a huge win offers your students a lot of things that they wouldn't otherwise be able to get, right? And so oh. your community colleges are hell eligible. <laughs> they can provide all sorts of financial aid resources to students that they wouldn't be able to get otherwise. They have um, uh, sort of soft skill services that they would provide. It's more than just making sure that a student can be okay during their clinicals. They, they have wraparound services that they can provide your students. Um, they've done this for a long time and they're pretty darn good at it. Um, and so it's wonderful to hear uh, hear these types of partnerships and and see it take place. And I'm thrilled that you use Bridge Valley, Anita, instead of creating your own LPN program. <laughs> Dr. Sachs definitely set us straight, and we and and we quickly realized we don't want to do this. We don't know what we're doing. We you can, can if that's your bliss, but <laughs> we we need to take care of open heart recovery. It's what we need to do and doing those kidney transplants and those and those patient care things of, of running a hospital versus, you know, starting a program and and, uh, you know, running an LPN program. We definitely that's not our that's not our specialty for sure. <laughs> Dr. Sachs, can you talk to us about what kind of impact in the community on businesses and on your students and graduates, um, what type of impact you've seen as a result of partnerships like the ones that you have with CAMC? Yeah, I mean, CAMC is making a huge difference for our students and frankly, for our, for the whole Charleston area, um, the impact for students is jobs. The, these partnerships are turning into employment for people. These are, and these are good jobs. They're really family sustaining wage jobs. I can take a student and put them through a two-year associate's degree program and see them making $70,000 a year when Anita picks them up. So like, these are these are really good jobs for people. Um, and that's a, that for me is sort of the central impact, but it's supporting students as they go through school. So that work-based learning, it makes a big difference in helping students because they know they're going to go work for an employer who they want to work with. So the preceptorships that 
Anita's been so good at setting up for us. It's a learning opportunity for students to work one on one with someone in the hospital setting where they're doing over 100 hours one on one with that person and really learning sort of the ropes. It's like an orientation of CAMC on steroids, and it's all part of our academic program. And so when students leave, they already know, you know, I did my preceptorship with CAMC and I want to go work for this business because it was a good fit. I liked it there. I know the culture. I know some people there. And so it's gotten students that entree into the world of work in the business where they actually plan on working. So they're able to demonstrate that the kind of employee that they're going to be. And frankly, CAMC is able to demonstrate the commitment that they have to creating a good workplace culture for people before they're ever even employees. So it's like test driving the job. And so it really is the employment that I would focus on, but it's um, so many parts of the partnership make that employment a much easier on-ramp for students who sort of see this great big hospital chain in our region as potentially something that they couldn't achieve otherwise. They can absolutely achieve it, and we really want them to. Absolutely. You know, part of that, too, is, you know, they come in in that in that entry level, whether it's the student, the nurse extern, we'll just use nursing for an example. You know, they're coming in as that nurse extern, which is that, you know, entry level position within the organization. When they graduate, they are immediately making $70,000 as that new grad RN. But the attraction and, and again, sustainable wage and they can stay within the state of West Virginia and stay in the community and stay in the church area and uh, be successful, make sure that, you know, they, they can, they can um, you know, supply the needs of their family because after they get here, it's that growth opportunity that CAMC can offer that individual. You know, we have the ladder for the uh, nurses that they can, they can challenge the ladder, you know, that the higher they go, the more money that they get. And then of course the management structure, um, it is just uh, such a robust and we have a lot of opportunities for our, you know, students when they come in. And we always say you're on an interview your first day of your rotation. Um, make sure that it's a positive one. Make sure that, you know, you're making a good impression. And then it's vice versa for us as well. We as an employer, we need to make sure that that we give them a good experience, that we are treating them res with respect and valuing them because this is definitely a partnership and it's a two way street because we need good employees to stay here in the community to take care of our community. So again, you know, whenever that we think, whenever that we talk to the Bridge Valley students, even in IT and the other professional technical positions, it's just a springboard position for them to start in and then to grow within the organization. I know my personal experience. Um, this year makes my 35th year. Uh, tonight is the awards dinner, so I'll be getting my 35 year award tonight. I'm so excited about that. But I started out as an admitting clerk and um, I was going to West Virginia Tech, um, you know, years ago. And um, I thought, you know, I'm just going to be here for five, for four years until I finish. And then I'm out of here. Well, CAMC just kept affording me opportunities to for promotions. And of course, 35 years later, I'm the corporate director of talent acquisition. So again, what a wonderful place to work. What a wonderful partnership. Um, again, starting out as that student, it's just a springboard position that it is endless. We always say to everyone, it's endless opportunities. Take advantage of everything that you can here. Dr. Sachs, you mentioned, you hit on this a little bit earlier, um, you were talking about recruitment into the program and why it's important to have business recruit uh, or help you recruit students into the program. And I, I will say for anybody that's listening, um, it's one thing for higher ed to tell you to come to higher ed because higher ed's a good thing to do. Community colleges don't have football teams. Um, so we don't get the same, <laughs> the same in your face sort of television. Uh, that that several uh, of the of baccalaureate institutions do. What connects students to community colleges is this workforce aspect. It is this business aspect. I apologize if you can hear the sirens going outside my office. Um, it is, in fact, this, this connection between business and industry. And so, Dr. Sachs, could you talk a little bit about how companies have helped Bridge Valley uh, build the 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 um, the students that you have in the programs? I mean, they, I think that's a great point that students come here because of a job. Students who come to community colleges in West Virginia are very practical. Um, 
I know that there are other states that say, oh, go to a community college and figure out what you want to do. That doesn't tend to be my student. My student tends to come in and say, I want to go into process technology because someone told me at this oil and gas company that I should work in process technology and that your college is the place to earn the credential that I need. And that is true across a lot of program areas. We get a lot of folks who come in because an employer said you need cybersecurity training and Bridge Valley is the place for you to get your cybersecurity training or someone recognizes the pandemic frankly, really helped enrollment in healthcare because people recognized those healthcare jobs were so critical. And so figuring out how do I get that healthcare training in an affordable way, we are the most cost-effective way to do training in the entire region. It's hands down, no question. Um, and so really it's businesses saying, if you want to work here, you need some training, you need a credential. And the way to get that credential is by going to Bridge Valley. It's our, it's our best marketing. Um, Certainly we can, you know, and we do go to high schools and talk to traditional age students about coming to community college. Our college going rate in the state is pretty low. And so for the half of people who are not going to high, to college right out of high school, they go work retail, they go work in fast food, they sort of wander around for 10 years until an employer finally says, you seem like you'd be a good employee. I'd really like to hire you. You don't have the skills you need. Go to Bridge Valley and get the skills. So my average student becomes a 29-year-old woman, a woman with two kids and a part-time job who got told by an employer in the region, you need to go to Bridge Valley so that you can get some skills. And I think that that is a really, really important point. And I think one of the words that Dr. Sachs used that's so important is the word credential. So I hear a lot from companies, oh, you don't need higher education. You don't need to go to college, da 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 da, -da. It's not entirely true. It's really not true at all. What higher education means uh, has changed a lot over time. And higher education means anything from a skill set to a certification to a one year certificate to an associate degree to a baccalaureate degree to any degree higher. It, it's this broad spectrum and continuum um, of degrees. And I think we, uh, as adults, talking to our youth, need to be very cognizant of the words that we use to make sure. Uh, that our students know that that all of these things are options and as anita said earlier that you can build on them you can start at one place and then as you continue to work and continue to have thoughts and ideas about what you might want to do next you can go back to school and get that next thing and get that next degree and continue to move up and have that that forward momentum well right before we ask any questions of our audience uh, dr Sachs or anita do you all have any one last thing you want to say before we turn it over I don't. Uh, well, I do. I want to. I just want to expand a little bit more of, about the community community technical centers. Um, you know, in healthcare, specifically the clinical side. Um, well, I don't know the professional technical side too. I would say because those IT positions, you know, those those are highly compensated positions that we're hiring individuals. You know, whenever that you look at a two year degree versus a four year degree, we don't make a differentiation here. So you know, as long as you have those credentials and those license, you know, whether you're an RN, a respiratory therapist, an IT person, um, a lab tech, we don't differentiate that pay from a two-year program from a four-year program. Of course, again, looking at where that where that, that can be a springboard is looking at management and, and other, you know, positions within the organization that you would have to go back and, and get that higher education. But again, going to a community technical center, getting that two-year uh, degree is just as valuable and, and important as getting a baccalaureate degree. Um, because again, whenever that you come to a hospital, it's going to equate to the same. We, we don't differentiate those pay as well. So I just had to throw that out there uh, too, that, you know, a lot of our employees um, you know, they are they are older. Uh, we do pay for, you know, going back to school, even after you're employed at CAMC, you know, we do provide that that tuition assistance to go back. And Bridge Valley is right here in our back door and we're better to go and, and you know, refer our own employees there. But we do have that 
older individuals that, you know, not necessarily right out of high school, that they have to work. And then what a balance that they they're able to have that work life balance and then go to school as well. And that's another thing about Bridge Valley. They are flexible, you know, in some of their programs that is available to those working individuals that want to go back to school and uh, to get those additional credentials. Dr. Sachs, I feel like you should just put Anita on a commercial. I know, <laughs> that'd be wonderful. <laughs> I'm, not sure, I'm not sure you would ever get a better advertisement than, than the things that she has said today. It's really wonderful. Halen, I'm going to turn this over to you. Do you have any, any questions in the chat? Yeah, thank you so much. Um, Anita, congratulations on 35 years. That is wonderful. And thank you all for being here today. Um, I'd like to remind the audience, if you have any questions, just put them in the chat or the Q&A box and we can get to them. But as you might be thinking of questions, we do have a couple. This first one is for Dr. Sachs, and you kind of touched on this a little bit, but if you could um, expand on how this has helped Bridge Valley expand its educational offerings in the region. Great. Um, I mean, I'll just stick with healthcare for my answer, although I could give you a much longer answer in many other areas. In nursing, so we've always had the RN degree. Um, we've been recognized as the best community college RN program in the region, and we're really proud of that. And I think CAMC's partnership has really helped us expand how we can upskill talent into the RN area so we can take we have ladders that include taking people from an LPN to an RN, from an EMS or a paramedic to an RN. We have respiratory therapy to RN. We just, and this never could have happened without CAMC support, have started something called the WIN Academy. And so it's the workforce initiative for nursing that allows 11th and 12th graders to come to Bridge Valley for high school in lieu of traditional high school to actually be on a nursing track so that they can complete their RN early, um, much earlier than they could have if they had gone sort of from high school into college. And so we're finding that we can get students into that RN track. Um, Anita helped us expand our sonography program. We're working right now to increase the number of medical laboratory technician students who we graduate because there's a tremendous workforce need. So it's really that collaborative across healthcare and especially across the clinical settings because I mean, you heard Anita say she needs a thousand people. And so anything we can do to really ramp up those offerings at the college, we can, I can teach a thousand people. I need them to come into the doors. So it's that collaborative of how do we make sure we find people in the region who want these jobs, who would be good at these jobs. We're happy to train for them. And I think it's continuing that, um, that partnership that really makes it stronger and lets us expand in the area. Thank you, Dr. Sachs. And this one is for the, the whole panel. So whoever wants to jump in, uh, what, would, what would be your advice to employers with workforce needs who are watching here today? Reach out to Bridge Valley. <laughs> if you do have any type of work, for, for real. Uh, if you do have workforce needs, you know, again, don't try to struggle and do this on your own. Uh, I said this earlier, you know, here we were looking at going down the track of, of, of uh, creating our own LPN program. You know, I said earlier, we are expanding. We're going to continue to expand. You know, West Virginia, we're an aging population that kind of changes the landscape for our health care and what we, you know, how we deliver our health care here with, within the state. So again, our expansion is just going to uh, get be greater. Um, we're going to need that increased workforce and, um, you know, looking at, you know, your current workforce, looking at your needs. Don't do this on your own. Don't go out, you know, uh, sidebar and go down the road and go, you know what, I think I'm going to start an LPN program. Uh, it's, it's stay within what you are specialized in and always partner, you know, with, with an educational facility. Bridge Valley is fabulous. Um, and if you do have a commercial, I don't mind to be on it, Dr. Sack. Um, but it, it they really are. Uh, they're the experts. Uh, they get, have given us good guidance um, over many, many, many years that we've had this partnership and this relationship. So that would be my recommendation. And even the ones that you just think, oh my gosh, I don't even know if, if they offer this. My goodness, give them a call. You never know of, you know, everything that's available. And there's so many things that are available. 
So I think at the end of this, Kaylin, at the end of the Q&A, Kaylin will have a slide that has contact information. So my advice for all of you is that write that contact information down and just call whatever the phone number is that is there, or go to the website. Many of you um, probably aren't in the Kanawha Valley area, right? And so if you're over in the Eastern Panhandle saying, what am I supposed to do? Who am I supposed to reach out to? The website will be up. You can go and look at our map. You can see what the community college is. There will be a phone number there. Call them. If you are too intimidated to call them, you've seen my face now for 45 minutes, call me. I don't mind. We'll connect you with anybody that you need to be connected with. We'll help make sure that those training programs are there for you so that you can get the workforce that you need. I think that's a great point. And, and I do sometimes have employers call me. I had someone call me from Morgantown who needed somebody who they already had hired trained as a CDL operator and clearly sending them down to Bridge Valley to do CDL training for five weeks from Morgantown just didn't make sense. But I was able to connect them to the program in their area and said, Phil is the guy you want to talk to and here's how you're going to get set up and made that connection and they were able to get started right away. So I, I would also offer I'm happy to be the intermediary the same way Chancellor Tucker is that we um, the community colleges work incredibly well together. I really like my colleagues who are at the other colleges. Um, we partner on a number of initiatives and we on purpose, this is nice for us. We don't have overlapping service areas. And so when somebody calls and says, I'm a business and I'm in Putnam County, it's really clear to everybody right away that Bridge Valley is going to help you because Bridge Valley serves Putnam County. And that's helpful uh, because then we we stay out of each other's way in, a, in some really productive ways. And if I don't have something you need, I know who does right away. And I can call them and say, gosh, this, this company needs a program that I just don't have. And is it something that you're doing? Dr. Sachs, you said one thing that I, I want to hone in on just really quickly. I know we have other questions, so I'll be fast, I promise. Um, I want to make sure that you all realize that the community colleges can provide training to your, for your existing employees. If, for example, and I have just done this with Bridge Valley, actually, because we're, we're neighbors here, my folks needed to understand technology in a different way than they knew how, right? We're asking them to use OneDrive. We're asking them to use, uh, in, you know, in addition to Zoom, they're using all sorts of different types of technology that we learned during the pandemic. But we learned them at a very, at least in my office, we learned them at a very base level. And I need them to be able to engage with teams differently than they, than they had when we were just trying to do a meeting quickly. So my entire office is going to go to training at Bridge Valley that Bridge Valley designed for my office to make sure that our employees know what we need them to know and that they're able to um, use the technology that we have now in, in a different and more productive way. Those opportunities are also available. Bridge Valley is particularly good at that type of training. And it, that's fun for my staff. They love to get to go do something that's going to last a couple of weeks and especially because in those kinds of situations you end up with a group of students employees of current businesses who really want to learn whatever it is we're teaching them because it's immediately useful for their jobs and so that's a different student than someone who comes in and is like oh, okay I'm at school today um, it's someone who's really engaged so that's a fun class to teach <laughs> Thank you all so much. Um, before I take it down, I wanted to make sure, can everyone see the contact information on the screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. Uh, we do have a couple of questions and comments in the chat. Uh, since it's been up for a little bit, I will go ahead and take that down. Um, we had a question, you know, in addition to the, the Business Academy, I know Chancellor Tucker, this is our second in a series of how to build your workforce at home. Um, they are interested in how are some of these educational opportunities and jobs being advertised inside and outside the region? What, you know, what are ways that we can spread the word? And again, you know, from a chamber member aspect, what, what can chamber members do for you? We take just about every opportunity that we can to talk about the programs that we offer. And this is one of the reasons that the chamber has been such an incredible partner, right? We started this at the business summit. Um, you offered up these business academies for us to do. And this is a way for us to get in front of all of you and, and talk about the great things uh, that, the, that the community colleges are doing and can do. 
each community college has a different um, marketing <laughs> technique and scheme and firm or whoever they work with. Um, they all obviously um, spend time saturating or trying to saturate their markets and letting people know. We spend a ton of time um, in K-12 schools and talking with students and trying to make sure that students know what those opportunities are and, and what's available for them. But as Anita and Dr. Sachs mentioned before, the best way to get the word out is for employers to get the word out for us and to tell students that there are jobs available for them that are good wage jobs, high wage jobs, but students need to have some sort of certification or training after high school to get them. And that the community college offers programs that are the types of programs that our employers will want to hire students from and encourage them to go to those programs. Thank you. We have um, another one. It is not a question, but it, well, not a question, but a comment uh, saying these relationships are happening all over the state. So if you aren't in the Bridge Valley area, you can reach out to the community or technical college in your area. I know, Dr. Sachs, you had touched on that. Um, and we have showcased this before. These are happening all over the state. Um, Chancellor Tucker, do you have, is there a number of the amount of learn and earn programs or maybe the, the number of colleges or businesses in it? So we have nine public community and technical colleges in the state of West Virginia. We have learn and earn dollars that we can provide uh, for any company that's interested. So that learn and earn program is that 50-50 wage match between business and industry for students who are in a community college program and doing an internship. Uh, really, our, our main requirement here is that that internship is not a student going to get coffee. I don't want students <laughs> to be, uh, to be you know, shuttling back and forth between, uh, you know, picking up someone's lunch and coming back. They actually have to be engaged in the work that they would be doing. Um, but we don't have, we have a, a financial limit uh, dollar amount that, that we have every year that we're given by the legislature, but it would do me absolute absolute pleasure to be able to go in front of the legislature and say to them, hey guys, we've done such a great job <laughs> with this program and have engaged so many employers that I need you to increase this dollar amount. We've had to do it before. Um, we were given 2 million additional dollars in order to make sure that our Learn and Earn program worked. I think last year we worked with, we had Learn and Earn partnerships with more than 80 companies in the state of West Virginia. And that number has grown exponentially now that we're outside of COVID. Um, so, you know, those partnerships are important. They're happening all over the state, as the commenter said, and, and I hope that they continue to. Thank you so much. And thank you all for joining us here today. Uh, this is being recorded and it will be available to watch on wvchamber.com. Uh, we have that contact slide up. If you have to go back and look at it again, it's a great way to get in touch. Um, and we look forward to continuing the series. So thank you again. Thank, Thank you, you all so much. Thank, Thank you, you for having us. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye-bye.